They were shocked to see Rashta congratulating Navier, yet the Empress thanked her for coming and was thinking if she had a gift for her. Rashta was holding the sword Navier gifted to her, and now she was giving it as a gift to Navier. Navier thanked her again for returning it, as she didn't want something she owned to be given to others. Rashta became speechless. They were surprised to see many changes to Rashta as she became colder. Before, she tried to show weakness and sorrow. Navier was thinking if this change was the cause of her terrible experiences in the Eastern Empire. Farang asked Navier what Soviesha sent as a gift. She replied that he sent the gift through Grand Duke Lil Ting. But the Marquis told her that the gift was sent by someone named as Evely. Navier was curious about the reason why Evely was doing an odd job for Sovieshu, since she should be in the Magic Academy. Duke LG was asking Heinle the reason for his silence and feels like he was working alone and asked if the reason is Navier. Heinle turned his head to Navier, answering LG that he can't do it since it was Navier's homeland and it's difficult to allied empire in war, even if the magic power is reduced and the existing powerful wizards remain alive. LG asked him if it was his goal in the beginning to conquer the empire. He added that if the Eastern Empire isn't destroyed, then history will write that the Empress started the war to avenge her homeland and reveals that he didn't want her to have such a bad reputation. LG told him that do as he please as his task won't diminish and he has no reason to give up because the harvest season is approaching. After the official banquet schedule ends, Navier orders the search party for Evely, but there's no news. She was sitting in front of Rashta, who was delusional, stating that it should be her that was sitting beside Heinle. Heinle replied that Rashta always says strange things and that such things never happen, while Rashta smiled, saying he is always mean to her and she is just stating the truth, bringing up the letters they were exchanging in the past. Someone but in asking that it was only a baseless talk and Heinle only cares about Empress Navier, but Rashta keeps on saying that eyes her that Heinle liked. Navier asked Rashta if she always cared about Heinle or is she concerned about her. A few days later, all get including Rashta had returned. She met Evely, the one that she saved, at the accident scene. Evely approached the Navier and apologized for coming late. Navier was surprised to see Evely grow up and hardly recognize her. Navier asks Langdal after hearing that Evely was found in the moon forest. Langdal reveals that they found their carriage completely destroyed and couldn't do much at the accident scene. Navier was curious how strange it is to see the carriage completely destroyed. Yet there is no one injured on Evely's group, as if they were protected by magic. Navier remembered Evely when she felt something strange and was thinking if it was Evely's magical power. Someone asked the journalist about nobles bringing news from the Imperial Palace to him. The journalist replied that he also doesn't trust that person and only trusts that person because they hate the same person. He was now preparing to welcome Empress Rashta as he was told that she was re-earning. Heinle asked Navier who believes that the one who attacked Evely was inside the Imperial Palace. While Navier told him that Soviesha might be a bad spouse, but he is a diligent emperor, will check the carriage himself and will prepare two or three wheels. She was wondering that someone who might have planned it was probably the person sitting furthest from the damaged area. Heinle becomes sad after hearing Navier speaking well about Sovieshu and asks if she sounded like she praising for Sovieshu. Heinle didn't answer but held her hand. But she cued very well that he was angry and only pretending. She reveals that she finds him cute and asked him if anyone else fids him cute. Heinle was embarrassed and told her that there is no one beside her. But she teased him by saying that she didn't know anything about his past because he's a playboy who attracts attention from others. He was dumbfounded while Navier enjoyed the teasing. Navier enters Laura's room and ease Evely, who blushed due to her new look. Evely heard that she sent knights to search for her and was embarrassed as she always received help from Navier. She explained that Emperor Soviesha wants to send a gift for Navier and that it is a personal gift that she must be the one to deliver it. She also reveals that there are also gifts from the carriage. Evely was thankful that Navier's knight found them first, while Navier questions her if she heals her companions, but Evely was hesitating to answer. The Empress didn't force her to answer and change the topic about the gift, and was presented with a small box. Navier was wondering about the gift sent to her and was surprised to see the tears of the fairy, the legendary gemstone. It tells the story of a fairy who lost the mate and couldn't bear the sorrow, so he created the gemstone to sink into eternal sleep. She remembered that since she hates receiving affectionate words instead of present, she demanded Sovieshu to give her the gemstone for her next birthday. At first, he agreed, but changed his mind, 
saying that when they have their first child, he'll give it to her. She was wondering if Sovietia was fulfilling his promise not to worry him and live happily. Grand Duke Kapman asked Navier if she was close to Evely and reveals that he heard something strange from Evely's thoughts. He stated that what he heard was Evely was suspecting the Western Empire who harmed the mages of the Eastern Empire. Kapman added that they seemed to have valid reasons because they lost the evidence and it won't be made public. Navier remembered what she heard from Heinle's conversation about a necklace they have to retrieve. Navier was contemplating if she would ask Heinle who wanted to harm her homeland when Heinle knocked on the door while she told him to come in and told him she ADD to things she wanted to tell him. Heinle was nervous to hear the words from her. Navier questions him if he is the one who caused the decline to mages. Heinle's face becomes pale and calls her name. She looked at his face who was always calm and affectionate and became unable to explain and was hesitating. Navier holds his hand and kisses him revealing that she was not blaming him but rather, she wants to tell her honestly. Heinle replied that it wasn't him. Indeed, he dealt with magicians to control the Eastern Empire but this time it wasn't him. He explained that he was already married to her and had no intention of declaring war on the Eastern Empire because of her, justifying he is telling the truth. She was surprised to learn the truth. He may have done it for his country. But as her husband, who wants to harm her homeland, family and friends, she's not confident she won't resent him. She thanked him for caring about her, while Heinle asked if she was not angry and disappointed with him. Navier asked that he will stop the war right, yet she was thinking that Heinle was only pretending. Navier comforts him by saying she was not disappointed with him as he gave up his ambitions for and loves her sincerely. If he was that kind of person, can she trust him a little more? She touched sincerity and put her mind together with him. On the other hand, in the Eastern Empire, Rashta was satisfied with how she was treated as an empress again from abroad. She may have embarrassed, but she was only curious to see how Navier will react. She thought that in order to hold her position, she have no choice but to get the Eastern Empire's nobility. If Sovietia still won't let her see her baby, then she would rather accept hospitality from abroad. Upon approaching the palace, she saw the father of her child and curious if he was there to ask her again to have her son treated like a prince. He approached her, but suddenly a large eagle tried to take the baby away. Rashta was scared and instinctively grabbed her son, revealing the child's hair color. The rumor that the grandson of Viscount Roteshu resembles Princess Glorium spread in an instant. The Empress explained hastily, but the Viscount's eldest son bore it silently and asked Rashta's help. Rashta was furious and wanted to crush him into pieces. To end the recent disputes, Count Pernu proposed checking a paternity test. The Marquis was happy to hear the news and added that they should also find the Empress' biological parents. The bloodline verification shrine was helpful in determining if you share the bloodline of your family. Being checked by noble families is a humiliation. In circumstances that could affect the future of the royal family, it is the most powerful method to quell disputes. Rashta was anxious upon hearing the news that Sovietshu accepted the proposal to test his child and to test her fake parents. At the same time, Sovietshu was also contemplating what to do. He doesn't want the royal family to go into a shameful situation, but he also wants to know the answer. But he's afraid Glorium isn't his blood. He remembered Alan Rimwell, thinking if he should thank him or ask to confess his crime of causing chaos. Rashta received a letter from her biological father and thought that he would ask about how she is, but unfortunately he only thinks about getting money from her. She became emotional, asking why doesn't he ask if she's tired, or apologize or just greet her at all. She was a fool for expecting something from her father. She was crying thinking how unfair the world was to her. Navier has good parents while she was born under trash. She already stole her position and her husband all that belongs to her. Why was she being punished? She already went through hardship from her childhood. She was thrown by her beloved like she was trash. She has nothing. She only reached out a little to grasp something and wants to be happy. She just wants to live as a human and to be loved by someone. She once hoped for her father to save him. Should she die in misery? That person isn't obedient to her and he will keep her around for life. She can't imagine getting rid of him, but now she has to cut him off. She called her maids with a fake smile and asked her to relay her message that she wanted to meet him and give a gift directly to him.
Rashta's father was having a good time drinking alcohol while Rashta was hiding behind the tree to ambush him. Suddenly, an emperor's knight showed to her father. She was curious what was happening, but she remembered how Sovieshu dealt with a problem when he took Navier's side that time. Just like at that time, he will help her since she was now the empress. Rashta believes that her father has been dealt with by the emperor. She just needs to send her fake parents away and give them a generous amount of money. Her fake parents has been talked with by Emperor's secretary. If they can assist verifying the Empress' biological child, they should stay in palace, but if not, then they should leave. 